Let's talk about customer refunds. We issue cu customer refunds via credit memos and we prepare credit memos the same way we prepare sales invoices using the same interface screen. Let's come here, tasks pull down menu and let's come down to sales invoicing. Here let's demonstrate this by issuing a credit to Cunningham Construction. Let's use a different numbering sequence for our credit memos. Let's start them out with a CM to indicate credit memo. Let's accept the rest of the top of the screen here. And let's come down here to the body of the invoice. With credit memos, we'll want to use the Apply to Sales tab. Come over here and there are two types of credit memos we can issue. One is for inventory items and the other is for non-inventory items. We're going to demonstrate both of these on this credit memo. On the first line, let's issue a credit for an inventory item. To do this, we want to use a negative 1 and we want to credit Cunningham Construction for a previous item that they purchased on a previous invoice. Let's come here to Tools, number 35610. We pull that in, you can see Peachtree carried the amount over as a negative $39.99. This is going to record in inventory that this item is back in inventory. Now, let's come here on this line and record a non-inventory item. $9.99 negative. Now you can see that Peachtree has calculated the sales tax and given us a total for this credit of $52.98. Now we can print this credit memo and give it to the customer. Let's use a different form other than the invoice plane. Let's use a credit form. So we click on the button for select from all existing forms to pull up the existing forms that are available in our Peachtree software. Let's use the credit plane. And here is the credit memo we can give to our customer. $52.98. Let's save this credit memo and let's apply it. To apply the credit memo within the customer account, come here to Tasks and come down to Receipts. Let's pull in Cunningham Construction and we can see here. Here's our invoice that we do need to apply this credit memo to. For a reference number, let's use CM1001 so we know that this is a, the application of a credit memo to an invoice. Let's clear out these discount columns and let's apply this credit memo to this invoice. So you can see now our receipt amount is zero and this invoice balance, this outstanding balance will be reduced by $52.98. Let's save this and we'll immediately come back in to demonstrate this. Let's open up this customer's account and you can see now our balance is 127.20.
Now let's look at a second scenario it issuing a credit memo. In the previous example with Cunningham Construction, they had not paid us yet. We had issued them an invoice for $180 and they had returned a couple of items. And so we is simply issued them a credit memo. Now let's look at an example where the customer has already paid us and we need to refund their money and actually cut a check back to them. To demonstrate this, let's open up a customer ledger for Williamson. Here, let's look at this cash receipts journal. You can see they came in and they paid with their credit card $220.31. Now they've come back and they want to return this wheelbarrow. So let's close out of here and let's come in and handle that return. Let's first come once again to sales invoicing and tell Peachtree that we have a returned item. So Peachtree knows that we have a wheelbarrow back in inventory. Credit memo. Let's use 1002. And let's come down here and return that inventory item. Negative 1. Let's come down to the wheelbarrow. And you can see that Peachtree carried the amount over as a negative $49.99 and told us how much we need to cut the check for, including sales tax, $53.49. Let's save this. If we wanted to, we could print it and print a credit memo and give it to Williamson Industries. Now, let's cut a check to them. Payments. And you'll need to come over here and change this to the customer database. Let's pull in Williamson. Assign a check number. And let's pay the amount. Now we can print this check. We're going to save it. Now we can do our final step, which is apply the payment to the credit memo. Let's delete the discount column because it's not applicable. And let's pay both of these items. You can see the receipt amount is zero. And we'll need a, we'll need a reference number. And now we can save this. And let's go back and look at the customer ledger. Here's the customer ledger showing they owe us zero. Here's our credit memo. And here's the check we wrote.